Hey everyone, it's Nicole Thompson, also known as the Urban School Psychologist, and today I just want to discuss IEPs and give you a few tips on whether or not your child should be tested for an IEP and what to do if your child is struggling. So above all, my most important takeaway in this video is to exhaust all possibilities before you actually request testing. And the reason I say this is because there's a saying in the mental health field, in the field of psychology, that if you're looking for a disability, you will almost certainly find one. So in other words, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. And if you're constantly focusing on your weaknesses and seeking out things to confirm your weaknesses, then most likely you'll uh, be eligible or you'll qualify for a disability. So before you get there, I want you to exhaust your possibilities. Work with your student and do other things that I'm gonna recommend. So the first thing is to actually go to tutoring. And tutoring is easy and it's something that is readily available. Tutoring can happen in numerous ways. You can get after school tutoring. I know they offer that at many schools for free. So see if there's any after school tutoring in your child's school. Also peer tutoring when your student is being uh, tutored by someone in their class or by a peer that's a couple of uh, a um, couple of years older and a couple of grades higher than they are. They can tutor them there as well. Also, you can ask your teacher or a teacher assistant to help your student when they have time, if they're willing, and tutor them that way. You can also pay for tutoring, which is another option. So the first thing I want you to do if your student is struggling is to get tutoring. The second thing is I want you to use the internet. The internet has so many different things and so many platforms for learning and sharpening your skills. And depending on how old your child is, that's how you pick the different um, platforms and all. So just to name a couple of um, popular ones out there, ABC Mouse, depending on your child's age. Um, and also one of my favorites is Khan Academy, and that's K-A-H-N Academy. What it does is it, uh, offers different opportunities and problems for your child to really practice on the skills that they need to be successful in school. So use the internet, all of those great um, learning opportunities that they have out there. And I'm pretty sure that you could find some on YouTube as well. Uh, the third thing that I want you to do is really sit down and get involved with your child's schoolwork. So when they're doing their homework, make sure that you're right there and you're really paying attention to what they're struggling in. Because the more specific you get, the more specific the information you can relay to the teacher, which will help in ways of helping your student. So let's say that they're struggling in math and you notice that the specific area that they're struggling in is let's say adding fractions. So you would identify the exact area where they're struggling in and you would relay that information to the teacher. While you're relaying that information to the teacher, suggest ways that um, maybe will increase interest for your child. So you know your child better than any of the educators. You know them in and out. You know their weaknesses, you know their strengths. So according to their strengths, let's just say they're very creative or they're very organized. You tell the teacher, you know, little John is very creative. He's very organized. Given that, I think it'll be a good idea if you implement some of these um, things into the, the curriculum for him to see if it helps, to see if that intervention will help, right? So just work with the teacher and be there the whole entire time. You have to advocate for your student and you do so by showing up, by asking questions, by um, getting clarifying information if you're still confused or if you're feeling lost. The next thing I want you to do is really stay involved during the entire process. Don't just bring it up and then let that, um, that information go untouched or you know you bring it up and then you sort of kind of back away from it stay involved the entire process and make sure that you're getting um progress reports and all from the teacher and from whoever is involved if all of that after you exhausted all of those possibilities the student still isn't improving 
then I would suggest that you ask for an evaluation for an IEP. Now the evaluation for the IEP usually starts um, with the counselor. She'll collect some information, you know, um, from the teachers, from you, and she'll pass that information on to the psychologist. So once it gets to the psychologist, she'll ask again, she'll interview you, the parent, to get pertinent information in evaluating your child. And the information that you should be um, very familiar with and very open with sharing um, with the psychologist is medical history, um, history about their work habits, their schoolwork habits. Have they always struggled? Is this something that just came up and you just started to notice it? It's things like that that really makes a huge difference. And in terms of medical, you want to um, mention if they've ever had an increased lead level because that actually matters. You want to uh, mention if they had any type of head trauma. A lot of us don't really take enough time out to realize how damaging head trauma can be, but it can be as little uh, um, an incident as little as maybe falling off a bed. But if the, the child fell off the bed and hit their head directly, it could have been enough of an impact to cause a concussion. And in some cases, concussions cause learning disabilities. So you want to be very mindful of that information when you're sharing it with the psychologist. And again, you just want to be there the entire time, checking in, making sure that everything is going well, making sure that all of the paperwork that is requested of you is being returned in a timely manner, and making sure that there is data being collected. Because honestly, without any data, it's not a, an informed evaluation. So what do I mean by data? Data could be um, old grades. It could be um, any type of progress monitoring that they're doing. So with the example, if they're having problems in math, it could be math probes. And what math probes are is just a sheet of paper with a certain amount of math problems on there and your child is expected to uh, solve as many as they can in one minute. So if they're doing that weekly, and you know, you're seeing progress, good. If you're not seeing progress or if the child is stagnant, then you know that evaluation is actually called for. Um, how can you advocate for your child in the process? If you disagree with anything that the educators are saying, make it known and give your reasons why you're disagreeing. Again, because you know more than any of the educators know. But just be mindful that some things um, may show up in a test that you're not fully aware of. So just be open to receive the information. Also, if you're in the meeting and to prepare for the meeting, make sure that they send you a copy of the draft report a couple of days beforehand so you can actually go over it and highlight the things that you have questions about or, you know, just highlight information that may not be relevant or information that you think should be included that they didn't include, but just look over that draft report and come prepared to ask questions. And if in the meeting they're discussing things and they're using jargon, excuse yourself and say, you know, I really don't understand. Could you clarify? Could you help me better? And one way that they could really clarify, and I use this quite often, is to use like graphs and statistics and things like that. And with the graph, I use the bell curve quite often and is very effective in explaining information to the parents. So just be prepared. So that's all I have today. Um, and I really want the major takeaway to be exhaust all of your possibilities before you request testing. After you request the testing, stay involved, stay engaged, and provide all of the information that everyone is requesting from you. And make sure that you know your rights. That's the last thing. Make sure that you know your rights. And if you don't know your rights, ask for a copy of them. They're always um, easily accessible. They can print them out uh, really quickly if they wanted to. So that is it for today. I thank you. Have a good one.